Hello, everyone, and welcome to a very special episode of the Keen Gamer Podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Shamillard, and let's introduce the panel, shall we? Uh, welcome back to the show, Noah Rosenthal. Welcome, Noah. Hey, Kyle. Good to be here. Thank you. And Jessica, welcome back to the show. Hi, thanks for having me back. Of course. And as you, the listener, can probably tell by looking at the name of this podcast episode, we're going to take a slight break away from video games and do one of our one-off spoiler cast ranking podcast things. Today, being all about the spoilers, very spoiler-filled uh, episode of The Book of Boba Fett. Let me say that again. We're going to go into full spoilers on The Book of Boba Fett. So if you have not seen the finale or you intend on watching the show very soon, just download the episode, leave it in your queue, but don't go much farther than this, I'm going to say. Um, before we get started on Boba Fett himself, I did want to know about kind of our origin story, our Rogue Ones to Star Wars. Uh, Jessica, do you remember how you got into the franchise for the first time? I remember watching the old films like really young, starting on uh, the third one. <laughs> so yeah. I had no context from like four years old. Uh, but eventually it was the games I actually got into more than the the main films mm -hmm. it was knights of the old republic knights of the old republic 2 the pod racing game the tie-in film to the phantom uh, tie-in game to the phantom menace so yeah i i much preferred them over the movies and then about um i'd say about seven years ago i went and just did a rewatch of them and just fell in love with star wars completely <laughs> uh watched a new hope uh all went through all of them I, I i did this thing where i just watched a new hope for like every day for like two weeks like wow. a giant nerd <laughs> That's commitment uh, right there. It was. Uh, I don't know why at that point in my life I was like, I need this film in my life. Um, it's great. And uh, I was actually uh, a pretty casual fan of the prequels when I was younger, so I have a, an appreciation for them. Uh, yeah. And from there, I've just watched like every Star Wars content since. Nice. Well, so it started off a little like, I don't know what this thing is, but it's on, so I'm going to watch it. Oh, wait, mm -hmm. history's cool. Oh, wait, I'm a fan of Star Wars now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Uh, Noah, what about you? What was your origin with the uh, Star Wars franchise? Well, it started pretty similarly. You know, they were movies that my parents would have on when my brother and I were kids. So that, you know, you have that going into going into being an adult, like, okay, I'm familiar with this. Like, I, I see, I've seen these movies, you know, the things that everyone knows. But then there's also the extended content. There's the Clone Wars, Rebels, everything that Disney's cranking out now. So when I was a teenager, I got really into the Clone Wars it, because you know that I, I love action <laughs> adventure <laughs> shows and I love the Force. I, I love that universe. So got really into it. And eventually, I discovered the Darth Vader comics, the particularly the they're called. The, the ones about him becoming a Sith after episode three, uh, the Dark Lord of the Sith, got really into those when I was in college. There's this YouTuber. Uh, uh, yeah, I wish I, I remembered. Oh, it's the, the Star Wars Fury guy, the guy who okay. does those. So, so there's him. He kind of covers the comics pretty well. And there's also a channel, I think, just called Star Wars Comics that's literally just the comics but voiced. So it's a fantastic way to experience them if you're not really a reader and i i love those comics so much i go back to those videos yeah. all the time and i i obviously know you as a huge fan of fallen order like i think most of our conversations have that comes up at least once i feel yeah that yeah that's a great game i, I played lego star wars as mm -hmm. a kid actually at one of my first video games when my brother and I got a GameCube for Christmas, we got four games with it. And one of them was the original Lego Star Wars that came out, I guess, after episode three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love the Lego Star Wars games. And I guess for me personally, I think I got to be the most casual Star Wars fan on the panel, um, which is why I'm happy being in the host chair and not on the panel chair. Um, I've always loved Star Wars from a distance, mostly. Of course, I grew up hearing things like, Luke, I'm your father, and doing fake lightsaber battles during recess. But the movies were never something I fell head over heels for. I think similar to you two, I did love the video games a lot, whether it's Star Wars Pod Racer for N64. Um, uh, is it something of the Empire? Um, there's a GameCube one, Rogue Squadron, maybe. 
Um, a lot of the yeah. space flying ones were really, really good. And I'd love to see one of those come back. Um, but it wasn't really until the Mandalorian, uh, which I binged seasons one and two at the beginning of 2021. So this is still rather recent for me. The Mandalorian is the first time I felt like I could say I love Star Wars because I feel like that TV series really captured the atmosphere and the characters that I I loved from the franchise. Whenever I did watch a Star Wars, I always liked seeing the music, the sets and the characters interacting. And Mando is the epitome of all of that. Um, it doesn't take itself too seriously. It's not all about the Skywalkers and the Force. I want to know more about the smaller stories of the Star Wars franchise, and that's the show that helps me out. Does Boba Fett do that? I don't know. Let's let's hop into our Boba Fett discussion as soon as we can. I think it was very surprising. Let's go back to Mando Season 2 for a moment, because that's the first time that we really saw the character of Boba Fett come back. Um, were you guys shocked in Mando Season 2 when you saw the Boba Fett armor appear and then later when you saw Boba Fett come back to claim that armor for his himself Jessica uh, I can't remember if it leaked or something beforehand um I thought it was cool initially to have Boba Fett back he's always been this character who honestly just had cool armor it's like yeah and he flies uh <laughs> he has the blasters yeah um I've always liked him just for that so I'm like oh they're bright except for Clone Wars when they made him a little bit more like a character it was cool to see him back I was excited to see him in the Mandalorian yeah what about you Noah so I wasn't surprised because it, Disney has kind of been relying on throwbacks. They, they kind of used a retcon at, as something to tie them to the original Star Wars to try and sell fans on the idea that nothing's changed. Mm -hmm. So no, I wasn't surprised to see it because he's a very play it safe character, in my opinion. Like, it, let's say they had brought Darth Vader back. It, yeah, there would be riots, but... Yeah. Uh, he's more of the, the kind of character you can you can bring back without risking anyone being extremely outraged over it, or at least not as outraged as as a character like Darth Vader. There there has been scrutiny for for this retcon, but you know what? It I think the show's worth it. <laughs> yeah, totally. And I think um the retcon is very interesting because the whole what happened to Boba Fett after uh episode six is a huge thing that the fans of Star Wars theorize for a long time did he escape did he die in the sarlacc pit what really happened to boba fett and we get the answer in the tv show but i'm not sure if it's the answer everyone was looking for i did read at one point i believe in a novelization um it was canonized that boba fett actually kind of like became one with the sarlacc i think through like telepathic powers i'm not sure if you guys have read this at all either but Not then, this. yeah, uh, then Boba spends like five years in the pit getting stronger and wiser until he finally tricks the Sarlacc to let him go. It's kind of like uh, the Sarlacc is his like uh, the guardian of his prison and he eventually just tricks him to let him go. It, it sounds really cool. Uh, yeah, I was like, honestly, I'd die for that show. <laughs> yeah. In in Book of Boba Fett, he just used a flamethrower and just like <laughs> blew his way out. But at the end of season two of The Mandalorian, we got a post credit stinger. And it was Boba sitting on Java's throne on Tatooine. And then the text came up, Book of Boba Fett. Did you guys have any expectations before the show began of what you wanted to see from a Book of Boba Fett, Noah? Well, I kind of thought it would be like The Mandalorian, but more casual. Like you'd be using Tatooine as your your hub. That's the mm -hmm. go that would be the go-to setting. And I kind of thought it would be more I thought there'd be more involvement with crime because he's sitting on Jabba the Hutt's throne. So I was kind of envisioning it being it like uh, Star Wars Breaking Bad, kind of. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Uh, Star Wars Breaking Bad just brought so many ideas to my head that I don't know. Like, imagine if uh, uh, Boba's droid that was voiced by Matt Berry got into, like, the blue meth business. I don't <laughs> I'd watch five seasons of that. I don't know why. Um <laughs> Jessica, what were your expectations before the Book of Boba Fett premiered about what you'd kind of want to see from it? Uh, I, I wasn't really high on the idea because I, I think I just liked the Mandalorian so much. I really wanted Mandalorian season three. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, and we're getting Book of Boba Fett. At least I didn't think we were getting Mandalorian season three. Um, so I didn't have great expectations going in. Honestly, I, the same with Noah, I kind of thought they were going to go down uh boba fett as as the crime lord of of mos, mos espa now 
yeah that was my that was my expectation of what was going to happen yeah going back to what noah said i definitely did not think this whole show would take place on tat uh, tatooine the way it did i thought boba fett would at least spend two to three episodes being a bounty hunter you know doing the thing that he is kind of known for doing but almost immediately we see him take the throne and begin involving himself with the politics of Tatooine and trying to make alliances with the other families and members of the planet. So I was also surprised by how static he was throughout the entire series. And then, of course, later on in episodes, I believe six and seven, we are not really on Tatooine. We're with somebody else entirely, but we will get there. Um, so I guess like the next question would be the opposite of what I just asked you. Now that the show is over, um, did it meet expectations and what were your overall thoughts on, on this season? Jessica. Uh, the first two episodes uh, I, I really loved. It was like, Oh, you're, you're, you're doing this with the Tuscan Raiders. I didn't expect that storyline at all. I, I totally. actually really enjoyed, I actually really enjoyed it. I was like, I'm really, I liked the flashbacks more than what was going on in mm-hmm. Tatooine. It, it just felt like a distraction. Uh, Boba Fett just kind of felt like this. Yes, man. Like he said yes to <laughs> everybody when they yeah. changed, like, Oh no, but we have to do this. I was like, this does, this does not seem like this badass bounty hunter guy. Um, so it, my my reactions are super mixed to it. Uh, yeah. I didn't expect the first two episodes. And then it, yeah, it went downhill in the third episode. Um, kind of got a little bit back up. And then it just changed into a totally different show. So it was a bit of a, a, bit of a roller coaster for me with this. Um, I'll get to know about his thoughts. But I do want to kind of like dig back into the first three episodes were essentially two storylines being told simultaneously. Were you a fan of like... There is Boba post Sarlacc, and then there's Boba uh, doing his political campaign on Tatooine. Were you a fan of like the the multi storytelling, or would you prefer a more linear style? I think it could have worked if the storyline and the present timeline of Book of Boba was actually interesting. It just wasn't interesting to me. It was him going mm-hmm. from place to place, trying to like. It seemed like giving into their demands so he could be in charge. Like I said, he just said yes to everything. <laughs> he didn't seem like like the badass he was in the flashbacks. I liked that a lot. So I guess if it had been for me personally a more interesting plot, I wouldn't have minded the split timeline. Yeah, and I think if they would have told it more balanced as well, because I feel like we'd go into an episode and we get eighty percent of the episode would be the the Tuscan Raider stuff, and twenty percent would be the the current timeline. Where if it was more fifty fifty or just more balance i think would have been would have been more interesting um noah now that the the show is all done what were your overall thoughts on the book of boba fett well i really agree with what jessica said those the flashbacks really are what made those first few episodes and when we lost those we we saw a, a significant dip in, in how it was doing mm-hmm. yeah like the, toward the middle like yeah got fr- episode three going into four and five until really the din jar and st- steals the show it just becomes it different and, and not in a good way but i really really loved those tuscan raider flashbacks and i, I think it would have been a lot better to draw that out more because it because going into that story arc it I just was never sold on the idea like really suddenly Boba Fett's had this change of heart after being eaten by a Sarlacc and meeting these these Tuscans like it I just didn't see it enough to believe it. Yeah and this is just just like just a thought coming to me now is we're kind of talking this out but I feel like Boba Fett really did start with the intimacy to it that I didn't expect whether it was his relationship to the to the Raiders and even like I think it was episodes two where they're kind of doing a dance or they're doing some sort of ritual and it it was all really well done and tastefully done, I feel as well. But I feel like the second half of this show lost a lot of its heart and emotion and character and it kind of just became, here's a bunch of CGI action for all you Star Wars fans out there. Um, I'm not sure if you guys have any elaboration on that point of like the show starting with so much heart and soul and intimacy and then kind of becoming the copy and paste Star Wars formula in the last finale i'd say yeah i totally agree it 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 went from like you said that's a perfect way of putting it having a lot of heart it looked like it was going to be this character study of boba and what he was going to change into for us to see in that other alternative or that other timeline Mm -hmm. and you're right it just like it flipped a switch like i love the mandalorian stuff but what was it doing in this show this is the book of boba fett not the mandalorian season three Mm -hmm. you know yeah what about you noah uh 
And what was the question again? <laughs> Just about how the show like began. It seemed like with a bit of heart and intimacy. And then maybe as the show went later on, it kind of became more formulaic. Um, yeah, I guess I kind of agree with that. I, I wasn't as big a fan of, of, uh, of the deeper stuff because I felt it, it was forced. Mm. It like made... No pun intended. It, yeah. And, <laughs> and they, and they didn't sell me on the idea that that Boba Fett could suddenly change. Like, I'm, I'm, well, actually, in, now I guess it's not an unpopular opinion. I was much, much more a fan of how Boba Fett was portrayed in the original trilogy than how things have been added to him through. I, I guess as a kid in Episode Two, I like I did like that. But but mm-hmm. this, besides that, all this Legends content and now the new canon for him, I'm just really not a fan of. I much preferred when he was just a mindless mercenary. Yeah, two thoughts come to mind. The first one, that train heist scene was really good, though, right? Where him and the and the the Raiders like take down that. What is that? Like just like a sand train carrying spice or something like that. That was a whole cool scene. I feel like I haven't seen a train heist since like Breaking Bad. Like it's a very, it's a thing that doesn't get done very, uh, very often. And then, um, the second part I had when it comes to, we were talking a couple days ago, Noah, about Master Chief and showing his face. Boba Fett does this a lot in the book of Boba Fett, and he doesn't really do it at all in the original trilogy. Do you think the fact that he is more of a character with a face than the avatar for someone that makes him a little bit harder to connect with in the book of Boba Fett? Uh, that's part of it. And I do, I do get why they did it though. Like you, you couldn't have done this show without showing his face. It, it just wouldn't have worked. I mean, Mandalorian and, does it fairly often. Yeah. It, yeah. There's that. But, mm-hmm. but we know what Boba Fett looks like. He, he's a clone. So, so he looks like Jango Fett or Tamara Morrison. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Okay, I'm just kind of curious if there's some maybe like a dis- disassociation with the character now that his face is so prominently shown. You know, I I, I kind of agree with you, Kyle. Like, I, I've got some Boba Fett stuff up there. Like, yeah. I've always loved <laughs> Boba Fett, not for being like, a, he's just the guy who flies around and was a cool bounty hunter and had like a couple of lines in the original thing. I always loved the look of his armor, of Star mm-hmm. Wars. It's whether I like the story or not, it's kind of what the characters look like. Like, the, I like collecting figures of them. I think if maybe they'd done a better job with what his character is, I'd be more excited. But he was introduced in Mandalorian season two, and I was just so uninterested for this character who I thought was cool for years. Yeah. Uh, I think if he had kept the helmet on, or even if it had been handed down the Timothy Olyphant, I just mm-hmm. I think he's got more charisma than the guy who plays Boba Fett. But obviously, he's like he played Django. That's what he looks yeah. like. Mm-hmm. Um. I. It, it did. It did make a difference for me. Yeah. There's like a lack of swagger with Boba Fett in the show that like it just doesn't he doesn't come off, come off across as intimidating to me like he used to in like maybe the original trilogy. Um, it's also like I just feel like he is like you're saying, Jessica, he's kind of just a yes man. Like he really is like uh, the bar is like, hey, will you run these rules and fees for us? He's like, yeah, whatever makes the place safe, I guess. Um, so it's very interesting. And it should be no- like I read this before the show even premiered. Maybe one of you guys know more than I do. I think Boba Fett had a total of six and a half minutes of airtime in the in the entire first trilogy of movies. That so tracks. This, yeah, this, this is a character that mo- fans mostly built up in their mind more than what was shown on screen. Like there's been books, there's been novel novelizations, there's been all this other stuff. But for the main part, there's been a lot of fan fiction in Boba Fett's lore. So to, for him to finally have eight hours of screen time or six hours of screen time. Um, It was a lot more Boba Fett than we've ever been used to. So I do wonder if that expectation of he's the strong silent type who barely says anything. No, he says a lot and it doesn't really land for the most part. But you know, for me, Fennec Shand was more Boba Fett than Boba Fett in this. Like she had, she looked cool and she did cool things. And I'm like, that's exactly, that's just what I wanted. She had cool one liners. Like she Mm -hmm. was, yeah, she was that type. So I guess the next question, we're kind of talking on it already, but when you look at Boba's arc from the beginning to the end, do you feel like it was satisfying at all, Noah? Um, it I didn't hate it. it I do wish that it had been better. Like I was saying that they needed more time with the Tuscans. I, 
it just was not believable for for him to have had that change of heart if from mm-hmm. from what we saw we needed to see more of that huh? yeah yeah and i i guess i see what you guys are saying with with the mask but i i think they were trying to kind of characterize him a bit more which you, you needed to do if you wanted to do to do this show and let's see that that arc um more time with the tuscans i wish there had been more criminal stuff you know that yeah. that's what that's what this character is really known for like i said uh star wars breaking bad before that that's kind of what i what i went in thinking i'd see and and i wish we had gotten something closer to that like he ends up trying to rule with respect and that's just not true to the character that that we really know i i wanted to see like like ri- rival gangs and all that stuff try having to rule with muscle but i'm not completely unsatisfied with what we got just needed some more especially on a planet like Ta- tatooine like you can't just land there and be like okay guys there's gonna be rules now like i'm gonna make this place very clean no more sand no more dirt no more grime like this is a place that is naturally full of people like the motorcycle gang and the uh the the tuscans and like there's all these different cultures and people you're not going to unify them in a day or two um and also what you're saying Noah, about like i wish we saw more crime i kind of wish the show was just like judge fett where every episode okay. matt barry robot would bring in a new uh civilian of the town and be like <laughs> this guy uh broke his wife's car windshield and denies to refuses to pay the fees for it that'd be a good show um so I guess, Jessica, when you look back at the show and Boba's arc, do you think it was satisfying at all? I think it started off, like I said, really great. I thought they were, uh, they they do more with it than they did. And then it did start to go off in the middle and he kind of didn't have an arc in the middle. He was just there mm-hmm. going from place to place, trying to clean it up. Uh, I get what they were trying to do, talking about how the Tuscan Raiders did change Boba, but I think Noah's right. They didn't do it for long enough. Suddenly mm-hmm. he was just trying to do all this from this other character we've seen for so long, even in The Mandalorian. Um, and I did like the end shot, though, of him. Uh, I can't even remember who he took out with the staff when the other guy was talking about how family didn't matter, yeah. friends didn't matter, and then he, he had the Tuscan Raider staff. That was cool. I don't think it was worth it to get to that point just for that. Was- like. It was a rough journey to get there. Yeah, just for that one moment. I I, I wasn't a fan of his character arc. Um, I, I think they could have done a better job. I think one of the, my biggest critiques with the story arc is that there isn't like a complete arc there. Like I just, I just think with like Noah said, I think it begins halfway through. I think we miss a chunk of the beginning of his uh his character shift, and then halfway through the sh- the arc, Mandalorian steps in and just fills in the rest of like with the black sharpie. Like, I look back in the finale, and I don't even remember kind of the closure or resolution that Boba walked away with. He was kind of like, thanks to all my friends for helping me out. That was a tough battle. To the Rancor, to Mando, to Amy Sedaris. Like, yeah, I don't know. I don't even think he got the closing shot in his own show. I think that was Mando and Grogu, (laughs) like his own show. I know. That's crazy, Mm. right? Which maybe, do you guys think maybe like the title of the show was an issue? Could have, should have been called Star Wars Story or the Book of... Moss Esper, th- Tatooine, something. Yeah, ta- Tatooine Tales, right? Oh, I yeah, I do want to expand on that. So, so here's what I think it should have been called: The Mandalorian Season Three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't, I, I don't see why you couldn't have done this as an, the next season of The Mandalorian. You had seven episodes, mm. like like fill fill more time with with Mando and. I get when they were trying to do like a chapters of a book because, you know, it, sometimes in a book you have these turns where, oh, suddenly we're not watching our main protagonist. In yep. a TV show, that translates to kind of like Game of Thrones where you have multiple storylines going at once, different characters crossing paths. That you might say Lord of the Rings is like that too, though they don't have quite as many storylines going going at the same time. Well, well, I shouldn't say they. The, the man's name is J.R.R. Tolkien. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, there's that. And I kind of admire Star Wars trying to do that. But you need to pick one or the other. You, you can't have this. So right now we're only watching Boba Fett. Now we're only watching Mando. Like it, you need to need to do it like how Game of Thrones did with seeing every storyline in every episode for it to really work. 
And I'm really wondering if Star Wars, like that, if Disney needs to get ahead of the curve right now before Obi Wan comes out, before Ahsoka comes out, are these TV shows going to be about these singular characters, or are they going to be about the Star Wars universe as a whole? Because if I go into Obi Wan, which is going to be like eight episodes, and five of those episodes are about uh freaking Darth Maul, I mean like. <laughs> What do I like? I'll be OK with that because I like Darth Maul, but also I feel like I'm not getting the Oba, Obi-Wan story I was promised, you know? Um, so, so, it, while I'm thinking of it, I love Darth Maul, but like he's yeah. <laughs> one of the reasons I I watch Star Wars and I, I do like what they've done with him, though. I, I think I could do so much better with that character. I think they just got a few things wrong that, yeah. that could make him so much better. Yeah. I guess real quick, uh, one off question. I didn't include this in the notes. If you were to have a book of blank book of X Star Wars character, who are you choosing? Noah? Uh, could, could you repeat? I, I want to make sure I don't answer wrong. <laughs> so if you could have a like a book of Boba Fett style TV show for any Star Wars character, it's called the book of blank. What Star Wars character are you choosing? Ooh. And why uh, is it? What's the guy from the from Phantom Menace who goes? We so we so, what, what is the annoying guy? You mean Sabalba? No, the guy everyone hates from Phantom Menace. Oh, Jar Jar Binks. Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> I'd be done Jar Jar. for a book of Darth Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> yeah. What was the name of the uh, the Chewbacca in Boba Fett? What was his oh, name? Oh, Black Car- Yeah. I would like a middle. book on him. I want to know what he's doing in his off time because that guy was awesome. <laughs> hmm. I didn't know he was actually uh, came I, from I guess... the comics and he's got to be inspired by... Um, Oh, what was his name? Hanhar from Kotar 2. Did you ever play it? No. He was uh, he was a, sure. a a dark third Wookiee. He was kind of evil. Uh, he really reminds me of him. He was one of the best parts of Kotar 2. Was there a dark Wookiee in Clone Wars? I kind of thought he came over from Clone Wars for some reason. I, I well, can't remember it, him in Clone Wars. Can you? Uh, he's he's a bounty hunter that uh, that's appeared before. I don't remember him in the Clone Wars. Uh, he was in the Obi Wan comics that that that's take place kind of yeah. after the after the Darth, uh, the Darth Vader, Lord of the Sith mm-hmm. ones. And th- there are other black Wookiees. That I'm not sure if you call them that, the Wookiees with black fur that I know of. There's, yeah. in episode three, the guy that Yoda walks up to with, with Chewbacca is Tarfold, I think his name is, and he's the same one that appears in Fallen Order. Okay, yep. Yeah, yeah that's crazy. I uh, Disney Plus has like their behind-the-scenes thing. They usually drop it a week or two after the finale of a show. But I watched some of that, and they're talking about how there's over 250 Easter eggs in Book of Boba Fett, referring to comics and games and <laughs> novels in Star Wars past. So if you really want to write a good article, right, here's all 250 Easter eggs in Boba Fett. Just got to watch the series nine times in a row. <laughs> Just um, nine? T- 250, maybe? <laughs> and you have to watch it at like 0.5 speed so you don't miss anything, mm, of course. Mm-hmm. Um so let's put Boba Fett aside for a second, because while it was called Book of Boba Fett, we saw some very familiar faces appear. And I'm curious, Jessica, what did you think of the random two episode Mandalorian arc that we got where Boba had one line, I think, between the two when they cut back to him? Uh, surprised, excited, disappointed. It was very exciting to see it. Um, I'll just reiterate my point from earlier on. What the hell was it doing in Book of Boba Fett? But <laughs> yeah. you know what it felt like? It felt like when you were watching an American show when they had a backdoor pilot for something. Yeah. Only mm-hmm. this is already a show that's been on. <laughs> it always, yeah. Yeah, but I did love it. It was nice seeing Mando back. Uh, it's always fun to see Grogu back. He just, he's a little ste- scene stealer. Like everything he's in, I just love it. Um, it, it was good. Preferred the second episode over the first um i i quite liked uh mark hamill being back that technology is incredible like it's it was, scary you, you were just watching mark hamill playing uh like skywalker it was so yeah. good <laughs> i thought maybe ahsoka could like maybe if ahsoka and luke could have had a little bit more of a conversation because she was mm-hmm. just like oh just like your father and then nothing more it was like that well, would have been such a, a cool conversation to have I'm curious about that, because as somebody who has never seen Clone Wars, I, I do know that there's a connection. Didn't Ahsoka train Anakin? Isn't that, isn't that the uh, thing? Anakin trained Ahsoka. 
whoa okay so yeah <laughs> so i'm i i i gotta watch clone wars at this point there's so many oh. easter eggs and characters being pulled from that series i, I gotta get into it there's but, bound to be a good article out there telling you like the best episodes to watch as well because there are elena it is a kid's show there are like little like yeah. some of them are oh my god this is horrible but then yeah. yeah you have to remember it's a kid's <laughs> show and then you get some that are just phenomenal like season seven which was just like watching one of the best Star Wars films I've ever seen. Very cool. if, if you like Darth Maul, you've got to see him in the Clone Wars. That, that right. was terrific. Yeah, I think they're all on Disney Plus too, so I will yeah. definitely have to do that when I have some downtime. Um, Noah, what were your thoughts on the two episode Mando arc that we got in the Book of Boba Fett? To me, that to me, he was the best part of the show. That that's why why I'm saying he should just do this as Mandalorian season three because yeah, because that was really the best part of the show. Luke was great. I, I said in, in my review of, of uh, episode six, I, I guess that that Luke, like everyone that's saying like this rendering isn't convincing, like, no, like he, like these movies have always been scrutinized for abysmal acting. He, <laughs> he looked just like this in his original betrayal of Luke Skywalker, the, the weird bland looking face like, oh, my family's been burned. Huh, how, how about that? <laughs> Uh, it wasn't oh, the, this, it my, wasn't the oh, face my, for me. Yeah, it the, was the voice. The, the voice was great. It and said so one of my favorite lines I threw in there was it was when he when he finds out Vader is his father, he he looks more like a little boy finding out that Mickey Mouse is a guy in a costume <laughs> than a guy finding out, oh my arch enemy is my father. Oh my father. god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah, he was a it was a great portrayal. Like he looked just like the original Luke Skywalker did. Mm -hmm. And we got to see kind of the origin of the Jedi school that would eventually not have a happy ending in The Last Jedi. Um, I thought that was really cool. And it actually also kind of removed the cliffhanger from the first or the from the Grogu's decision. Are you going to stay with Luke or are you going to go take your adorable ass American Eagle chainmail or whatever brand it was and mm -hmm. go find Mando like that cliffhanger? Did, that, did you guys wonder what he was going to do or was it pretty obvious he's going to go back to Mando? I did wonder because I was like, oh, what's this show going to do? No. <laughs> but um, what was I going to say there? Oh, yeah. This, yeah. Uh, Luke just sent Grogu off on his own with RTD2. <laughs> like, even I, know we, I, I know he's 50 years old, but come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you oh, you need your choice. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. For me, it was like, we know what happens to that school that they were, that they were building. And I'm like, there's yeah. no way that's how Grogu's story ends. Like, he leaves before that that happens and this is the time for him to leave honestly um yeah and then is it the dark saber is that what mando is using right now as one of his main weapons i love the dark saber i think it's so cool the fight he has against i think it's john favreau who's in the armor i think that character is played by john favreau that's, i could be wrong great i have no idea if that's no true either. that's all <laughs> because in like the in episode one of the mandalorian when he goes to do you guys remember what the name of like the main mando leader is what her name is i can't remember her name yeah uh, but she like goes he goes name? to talk to her uh, like the main mando woman who's kind of like telling uh oh, we, we call her the armorer the armorer so uh i think in episode one of the mandalorian he goes to the armorer and that big guy is in season one and he's just in he's just john Favreau. And then to have that fight scene on that like that narrow bridge walkway where it's essentially, hey, you guys fight to the death. Whoever wins can have the dark saber. Like, and what is it? Like you have to have like enough like belief in yourself to wield the dark saber or else it's heavy. It, it has to approve of you. It, it, oh. It's this is true of, of any kyber crystal, but we there are theories that that one is special, which are true. I mean, I mean, it's a black lightsaber with a unique shape and mm -hmm. it uh, you've got to see that in the anime is in, in the anime is they shoot well they don't shoot it and they animate it with light trails like, like shooting with with your shutter speed all the way mm -hmm. i think it's down either that or all the way up where you get those light trails okay cool uh, yeah that's that's so cool so really like yeah that the dark saber doesn't like him the popular theory is because he tried to give it away at the end of that mandalorian season two hmm and the rules are you have to earn it in combat. Like that's the only way to become the the wielder of this of the saber is to win it through combat. You can't just be given it by someone. Uh, based on what we've seen, that that seems to be true. But it the the reason for that is because that that's how you earn it, its approval. 
Interesting. I really like the design of it. It looks like it contains like all of space in its blade. Like it's just a really cool design. Yeah, it. It, I love that lightsaber. That's that's instantly my favorite lightsaber too. <laughs> yeah. So let's break down into kind of more of the the specific stuff about the show itself. I want kind of want to ask you guys about your favorite characters, moments, sequences. Kind of just like your you walked away being like, this is what I loved about Boba Fett. Jessica, anything come to mind? As soon as I saw this question done in the doc, I was like, it's Amy Sedaris. <laughs> yeah, she's great, I, right? She's awesome. Like, she doesn't really fit, with, like, a lot of the tone with the Mandalorian or Book of Boba Fett, but I just don't care. She's so <laughs> funny when she's talking to the Jawas, when she's talking to Rogue, <laughs> when she's talking to your droids. Uh, she steals every scene she's in. The whole bit about her going on a date with a Jawa and being <laughs> like, hey, man, don't call me back, okay? That was that was a, <laughs> hey, Buster, I'm single, or whatever it was. Like, that's just a weird <laughs> evolution of the star wars franchise i don't know if you're just dating jawas like that yeah but... it, it's it is very weird and it doesn't fit in with anything but again i love it she's so yeah uh... if it was anybody else i don't think it would work but because it's amy sedaris i think it does mm -hmm. yeah totally true she does it great and i, I kind of feel like like part of the charm of star wars is in those moments and with those characters that don't really matter you can throw mm -hmm. in something like that and no one no one will care and i'll just love it it's uh, I think it's the Star Wars theory guy in one of his videos. He he says it's funny without intending to be. Yeah. yeah, for me, it's like it's a it's a that that one scene has humor. It has like kind of like lore building in a weird way. Um, it's got like fun acting. Like that to me was like what I wanted from the entire series was like the Amy Sedaris stuff. Which once again, that was her and Mando, not her and Boba. So what's that say? Mm. Um. Yeah, she was great. I, I always love her droids too. Um, also, one of her droids in Boba Fett was the droid that you see in Fallen Order. It was the first time seeing like BD. a live action version of BD, which is very cool. Mm -hmm. um, maybe some signs that we'll see uh, Cal in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, Noah, favorite characters, favorite moments? We'll kind of like just hop around and and go through them. Oh, I did want want to ask. So that that BD droid is mm. has that been confirmed to be the same one from Fallen Order or a different BD droid? I don't think so. Because she just called just it AD. The, I think it's just the model. I don't think it's the exact one. I think it's just this is the first time this droid has yeah. appeared in live action Star Wars. It, right. It, yeah, I wanted to make sure it wasn't missing something there. Yeah. So so favorite character. My favorite character is going to have to be Cad Bane. Yeah, uh, and and I think the show would have been a lot better if he had been in, in more episodes, and and that arc had, had been longer. He, that live action rendering of him was awesome. Like, mm -hmm. sure, it was a little bit different from from the animes, but I prefer the live action one. That looks great. <laughs> this is my first time seeing this character. Like I said, I've not seen his other uh, iterations before. I was listening to another podcast, and they're like, "Cat Bane is our number one like prediction for." cameos in this show it has to happen and that scene like when timothy oliphant leaves the bar camera pans up to the dusty desert and you just see like the silhouette to walking slowly like away from the sunset it was very evocative of like westworld for me or just like a classic clint eastwood movie it was like it was so cool and then that dumbass sheriff not not <laughs> timothy oliphant the other one is being dumb and gets himself killed and all that stuff uh can you real quick for maybe anybody anybody listening who's like me, what is Cat Bane? What is the hype? Why does everyone love him? I loved him on first impression, but what is his kind of history with uh, Star Wars? All right. So do you want to do this, Jessica, or should I do this? Uh, you take this one, Noah. All right. So Cat Bane first appears in the Clone Wars. He was in a, a few specials and there's there's other after that, he just kind of becomes a routine character. So the story with him is he's the guy that became the new number one bounty hunter in the galaxy when Jango Fett was killed in episode two. Okay, He was always a good one, which is why he does appear in the Darth Maul comics that take place prior to Phantom Menace. But, but with Jango Fett dead, he becomes number one. Mm -hmm. And he does jobs for, you know, all the top names in the galaxy, including Darth Sidious. Yeah. Is he kind of like a, as long as you pay me, I'll do the job kind of character? It, exactly. Like he's one of the only people that Darth Sidious had direct, like directly hired without being through Count Dooku or, so, or someone yeah. else. And Basically for me, Cad Bane was like Boba Fett done right, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a great yeah. way of saying it. 
Mm -hmm. Like he, like I liked, I actually, I, he was okay in the Clone Wars. I didn't get as hyped as other people did for him. But you're right, Noah, that rendition of him in this was incredible. Like I just stared at him going, I know it's not like perfectly, but you've, you've changed something we saw in an animated cartoon and you've transferred it to this and it looks, it looks even better. And they got the same did. voice actor, right? Yeah, um, yeah, that that was the great touch. Yeah, I completely agree, Jessica. I like, I prefer to live action him. Like in the Clone Wars, he was okay, but the live action him was awesome. And even the episode of the Bad Batch he was in, like all the Western in inspired shootouts, like that, like that was a great addition to the character. If they had done mm -hmm. him that way the whole time, that would have been awesome. There's no way he's dead, though, right? Like, there's no way they introduce him into the show just to kill him off two episodes later, right? I mean, it's I've like seen... Kingpin with Hawkeye. You're like, yeah, sure, he's dead. I, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I kind of think he is. I, I, because oh. the, because the, the original plan for his death was for Boba Fett to kill him at, at the oh. end of the Clone Wars, which is why many of us were so surprised to see him, because we figured they'll probably just do this scene in the Bad Batch. But, but no, here he is in live action, so... It, I kind of do feel like this is intended to be his death, but maybe due to popular demand, it won't be. <laughs> um, maybe you guys can help me out with this one as well. Is Obi Obi Wan TV show is that taking place timeline wise before or after Boba? It'd be uh, before four because because he's he's dead in the current timeline of Boba yeah. and Obi Wan. So maybe we see him appear in Obi Wan, which is like a prequel thing, which is kind of where he's still alive. Uh, that very well could be. I didn't think of that. Because I don't want I don't want him to be dead. I do not want this to be the last of the character. I can already see scenes in my head of him like just kicking so much ass that would I'd feel ripped off if I didn't see more of that or more of that character on my screen. The only thing I could think of is that maybe because he was done so well, like this is I think this is the only time in Star Wars people have been like, that's incredible CGI. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe it's very expensive to do that. That's the only thing I think. I'm like, OK, he's dead now, but I would love him to come back too. Yeah. Um, in terms of characters, I want to shout out, I think that they were just called the twins, like Jabba the Hutt's cousins, I think. Uh, the ones who were like, we're going to kill you, Boba. And then they're like, you know what? This isn't really worth our, <laughs> worth our time. We're just going to go back. You do whatever the hell you want on Tatooine. Um, I want to see more of them as well, because I think, are, are they, no, they're, not, they're not called Jabba's. I'm not sure what the species is called. But... Uh, huts. huts. Yeah. The Huts, yeah. The Huts are just like such a weird and gross uh villain species they're great antagonists and i would love just to see them kind of like twirl their gross slimy mustaches from behind a table some more um any other characters or moments from you guys that stick out i grogu i mean you, I, oh, you grogu, need to yeah. you, you need to you need to shout out he had at least like 10 moments that were adorable like from knocking on the window <laughs> yeah and then look like they're using his force to make him walk faster yes I, I loved it when he calmed down the rancor and then just went to sleep beside him. <laughs> oh my god yeah yeah uh he's he's the reason why um my best friend like i wouldn't say she hates star wars but she's not really into star wars she mm -hmm. watched all of the mandalorian because grogu was in it like he he brought so many people to star wars uh, but she didn't watch Pick a Boba Fett because she didn't know he was going to be in it. Uh, um, yeah, they they know how to make your mark make your heart melt with Grogu. <laughs> like they know mm -hmm. what strings to pull, what face to make him make to make me just like go aw, aw. Exactly. Um, he comes into the scene and smile just breaks across my face. Yeah. Um, when we're talking about favorite moments, I do want to talk about that awesome Rancor scene in the finale. Like that to me was one of the best parts because. From my limited experience with the franchise, I don't really remember seeing a Rancor outside of Jabba's pit. Like, I don't remember ever seeing one doing its thing naturally. Um, I think somebody brought up to me that there may be an episode of Clone Wars where they save a baby Rancor, but you still don't really get to see it fully grown, tearing buildings apart as it's, like, charging through. So the Rancor was was awesome. I love that. Um, it was, it that was cool, but that... Uh, I think that whole episode for me was a little bit mixed because it was a lot of action. Uh, and that, yeah, that actually mm. was a bit that I didn't really like was the reunion between Mando and Grogu. It was like, oh, look, here he is. Mando was like, oh, here you are. Yeah. It's like, there is no emotion to this at all. I've been waiting for this all season. <laughs> They're like high speeding on a cart and he just like looks down. And he's like, what are you doing here? <laughs> yeah. And I thought that could have been done way better. Like at least just have a moment to the side where they have a mm -hmm. little moment, not just while they're high speeding and out of there. 
Yeah, I did. I did like when Mando was there and like uh, Ahsoka saying like he's right there. Like you can go if you want, but are you doing this for you or are you doing this for him? And he's like, uh, I, I don't know. I just worry sometimes. I just want to make sure he's doing OK. Yeah, um, that was heartbreaking. I will shout out Danny Trejo as well as the Rancor trainer. Uh, this is a Robert Rodriguez joint. I'm not sure if you saw his name a thousand times in the end credits. Mm. You can't do Robert Rodriguez product without Danny Trejo showing up somewhere. And I thought he was just a fun character being the uh, the trainer for the Rancor. Um, I'm not going to say it was my favorite. In fact, it may be my least favorite, but let's get this out of the way. What about those uh, Power Ranger motorcycle people? They were colorful. They were very colorful. <laughs> um, they didn't. They didn't do much. I thought at least if you're gonna have a, an episode that's, that's just it's just so different to everything the show did, and it was kind of unnecessary. Uh, funny without meaning to be funny. <laughs> Not yeah. Amy Sedaris funny. Just like what's going on? Funny. Um, I feel like. I feel like there's like a different planet in Star Wars that was having a steampunk convention and this group of people was heading there, but they made a wrong turn and landed on Tatooine instead. And nobody's told them that they're at the wrong place yet. <laughs> so they're just like steampunking, like weird, like monocle eyes and colors and arms. It also reminded me of like cyberpunk, which is weird. It's like all, all the modifications on their bodies and stuff. I totally see it. Yeah. It was like 12A cyberpunk. It was like, we can't yep. do uh, cool cyberpunk. So here's all the colors. Although, yeah. as I said before the podcast, it had Sophie Thatcher in it, so she was at least there. I know a lot of people didn't love the segment, um, the flashback to when Boba saved Fennec Shan and he brought her back to the mod modification place. Um, there's a actor, well, not actor, musician Thundercat, who played like the head mechanic. And I was like, is that Thundercat? <laughs> and it played like one of his songs kind of in the background. So wow. that was, a, that was a, a cool little cameo, I thought. But before we move on, any other characters, moments you feel like shutting out? I already said the train heist stood out to me personally. I already touched on it a little bit, but Fennec Shand. Like, honestly, yeah. uh, like but, I said, I think she did a better job at being Boba Fett than Boba Fett did. She was cool. She had lots of cool one-liners. She just showed up, did the job, <laughs> left. Um, I would say her... severely underutilized, though. Yeah, like I'd watch a book of Fennec Shand as you were talking yeah. about earlier on. I think uh, uh, Ming Na Wen is is great. She's fantastic. Yeah, totally. What about you, Noah? Any other characters or moments that really stood out to you? There is one moment that that did stand. Well, it's it's a moment that that encompasses a, another issue with, with the show. It's the moment when Fennec Shand meets Mando at, when he's stopped at Amy Sedaris's shop. So they greet each other like their old friends, but the reality <laughs> is Mando tried Shot to her. kill her, <laughs> thought that he had killed her in the, in the Mandalorian. Mm -hmm. Then later in the Mandalorian se season two, she had her sights aimed down at Grogu, prepared to shoot his, his uh, foundling child, mm -hmm. and they're greeting each other like their old friends. Yeah, like, that's like what, what happened here. Like, this is like, sure, it's just business, but Mando probably doesn't see it that way. <laughs> yeah, you're totally right. I don't remember there's a moment where like those two kind of mend bridges or something. Because you, if you look at their history, he shoots her. She almost dies. Boba saves her barely. Uh, she almost kills Grogu. Hey, let's team up. Right. Is that kind of the arc? It. Yeah, It exactly. Like it. It's another thing that feels forced about about this bit series. Like not everybody here is friends, so like stop writing it like they are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's interesting. I never thought about that. Um, definitely the one character who I feel like kind of didn't get as much attention was Fennec Shan. I definitely went into Boba Fett being like, I want so much more of her character development. And then, like Jessica was saying, she was more of the the silent masked assassin with the cool one liner after a kill. But I wouldn't have minded learning more about her kind of origin and how she got to where she is today. Um, so I guess the final question I have for you two is, and I don't think they've announced it yet, so correct me, correct me if I'm wrong. If they announced a season two of The Book of Boba Fett, do you have any idea of what you'd want to see from it? Uh, any expectations for a season two of Boba Fett? Noah? I'd, I'd want to see... A want to see it as uh the godfather or or like or like breaking bad like like i said before maybe like the wire like if something that's about crime not yeah. about character growth I, 
Yeah, you know, don't give, don't force feed me character growth, Disney. <laughs> yeah, because like in the in the show, they talk about spice, but we never really get into the 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 depths of like what the spice is doing to the people. We're not really seeing the like negative reaction to it in tat on Tatooine, correct? Yeah, so, Unless I'm forgetting something. Yeah. Well, while I'm thinking of it, I do want to mention they stole that from Dune, Star Wars Eight Dune. Like that, yeah. that is, they they didn't even change the name. <laughs> <laughs> I think I saw Dune like three weeks before Boba Fett premiered, and I was like, wait, Spice, huh? Yes. <laughs> Where's Duncan Idaho when you need him? <laughs> um, Jessica, if there was a season two of Boba Fett, do you have any idea what you'd expect to see from it? Do you want a season two of Boba Fett? Uh, no, I want season three of The Mandalorian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. I kind of agree that, I, I of course, I'd watch a season two, but I'd rather see something else. Like I'd rather them focus more on other stuff. I'd yeah, rather like, have Boba be the side character of other people's character yeah. journeys than be the main character of yeah. one himself, I it, think. And I'll, I'll be in Star Wars. Um, there we go. Uh, yeah, that, me? That, ooh, we, we should do a, what's a Star Wars character we, we'd we want to be. I have a good one. What, who do you want to be? Which Star Wars character? Well, well, it'd be hard to get Disney to go for this this pitch, but I would I, I would want to be a Force sensitive that eats other Force sensitives. <laughs> Oh my god! Like, like yeah, like pen, like Pennywise or Cannibal Lecter, <laughs> or like it, Siler from Heroes, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just go but, into their brains. Yeah, so my, you want to be the Hannibal Lecter of Star Wars? Okay, I I do. <laughs> and, and I have a feeling my, Michael Eisner would say, "No, I need for kids' parents to give me <laughs> money." But listen, it, yeah. eventually they're going to want to do like the gritty M-rated Star Wars. They haven't done it yet, but eventually they'll be like, "What if we made like a." a bloody violent star Wars movie <laughs> about a serial killer who's eating other people's force. <laughs> I'd watch it. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't know who, who I'd want to be. I was gonna say I Han did. Solo. And then you just said that I can't be, I can't do that now. I want to be BB it. <laughs> yeah. On. He's rocking it. <laughs> Can I be general Akbar? <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, sorry. Uh, where were we before we got into this? Uh, uh, asking Ka about Ka Kyle, would you like a season two of The Mandalorian? I don't think so. Like I was just saying, I think I much prefer him to be the side character in other characters' journeys. Unless they do something really different and really cool with Boba Fett, I don't want to see another season of him sitting in that chair dealing with like local, you know, politics and stuff. I'd rather see the scope of Star Wars. If I'm watching Star Wars, show me scale, show me scope, show me different characters, you know? And this is something I agree with. Like, I really missed going to different planets in The Mandalorian. Like, even if it had a subpar episode, like, mm -hmm. I can't remember what the episode was, but he was in a cave of, like, these spider things. Yes, uh, it yeah. It wasn't the greatest episode, but it was cool seeing a different planet. I love mm -hmm. the this this the planetscapes of Star Wars and the games and yeah. in the movies, and it was really missing in this when you were mainly on Tatooine and a little bit in space with... Uh, Mandalorian. Going back to like one of Noah's points, he, he keeps bringing up Breaking Bad, which is a show that primarily took place in a desert, but they always made it look kind of interesting. Like even though they were doing another drive in the desert in their RV to cook some meth, at least it looked different and stylish. Where I feel like Rodriguez did not have that talent to make Tatooine look interesting or different from episode to episode. By episode four, I was like, there's another Dune. There's some more sand. Boy, sure looks sandy there. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely a huge critique for me. There is a way to use cinematography to to really like even like show me Tatooine at night more often. Like show me the cold, desolate Tatooine more than sunny, bright, you know. But so I, I'm good. He can show up in Obi-Wan. He can show up in Ahso Ahsoka. But we'll see. Um, Yeah. So I guess before we close out the show for th today, any last minute thoughts your last chance to get anything off your chest about Boba Fett, Noah. Um, more Cad Bane. More Cad Bane. Yeah, like he he can be dead there, but but in like in shows that take place prior prior to that in canon, did like the Obi Wan show show him again. Yeah. If I were to hop into VR chat, I'd probably look for the Cad Bane skin. <laughs> Not that I ever would hop into VR chat, but that's probably who would want to walk around as for a bit. Uh, Jessica, any last minute thoughts on Boba Fett? Uh, we didn't really talk about Timmy Pitt all of them, like all that much, but he is just fantastic. He's another scene stealer. He's in it. You know mm. he's going to do a great job. I really wish he had Boba Fett's armor. <laughs> he is so like casually cool all the time. Mm -hmm. 
Like whenever I see him in something, I go to the bathroom, I look in the mirror, I'm like, how do I, how do I copy his mannerisms? How do I just do <laughs> that naturally? Um, I know this is yeah. off topic, but did anybody watch San Clarita Diet? No, I haven't. I want to, but. I've seen him in so many things and that is the thing. He is the best. He's so good at comedy. He's you incredible. didn't love him as Agent 47 in the first Hitman movie? Oh my God, did he do that? that, <laughs> that was that's him. him. That's him with an awful bald cap doing Hitman stuff. Well, I'll have to watch it and find out. Yes, that's probably one of his less cool roles, if you is ask Is that me. his best comedic performance? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was laughing, but for the wrong reasons. Um, I guess we should say as well with this character, he did get shot by Cat Bane, but I knew right away he was not dead. Like, it was like grazed his shoulder kind of shot. And then, of course, we see Thundercat working on his character. I think that's the post credit scene of Boba Fett, right? Is him healing yeah. up Timothy Oliphant? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very cool. Um, so I think that's going to be a wrap for us on our Book of Boba Fett spoiler cast. Thank you so much for anyone who is listening. These are a lot of fun. I love doing these kind of let's just open the gate and talk about everything and anything we can from a series. So I want to thank you guys for joining me on this uh, special episode. Jessica, where can people find you and follow you if they're interested in your work? Yeah, so you can find me at Resi Jesse on Twitter. And if you're interested, I've done the Uncharted review for King Gamer, if you want to check that out. I read that, and it's a very good review. I like that Thank very you. much. It's a better review than the movie is, probably. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Noah, where can people find you or follow your work? Uh, you can find my YouTube channel. On YouTube, type in The Black Rose. If you don't if you don't find it right away, add the word Bethesda, then and it should be the first thing, you know, if you, if you want to see me as, as the force sensitive that eats other force sensitive stuff, <laughs> dark cannabis. Wait, wait a minute, dark <laughs> cannabis. <laughs> no, oh, okay, so that, that name needs work. But if you want to see that, it doesn't need work. Make sure Disney finds that YouTube channel. <laughs> and if you don't feel safe, you can call 999 or 911 in your local area. <laughs> Are you laying in bed feeling like your force is being eaten? You're probably in danger. <laughs> It's dark cannabis. <laughs> you burst through your wall like a Kool-Aid man. <laughs> All right. Well, my name is Kyle Shamillard. You can follow me on Twitter at Shamakai. We will be back with another episode very soon. We are all very anxious to hop into Elden Ring around here. So you can expect more coverage about Elden Ring, Horizon Forbidden West, Pokemon Legends, all of that stuff in the near future. If you're listening to this podcast and you haven't yet, please give us five stars on Spotify. It really helps people looking for video game podcasts find this one specifically. You can watch us on YouTube at the Keen Gamer channel. We're also live on Twitch recording these. So if you go to KeenGamer.com at Twitch, you can watch us live and see all the things I edit out of the podcast. <laughs> but that aside, uh, hopefully everyone has a good day out there and we'll talk to you real soon. Bye, everyone. Bye. May the force be with you. Yeah. <laughs>